Hi everyone, welcome to this video. I have a similar video on React Native, which is a technology that helps you build applications for iOS and Android with JavaScript and React. This video is about Flutter and there we'll have a look at the pros and cons of Flutter and the future of Flutter. And below the video you also find a full article where you can read basically what I'm saying here uh, and a bit more. And uh, you also are more than welcome, of course, to share, like, and subscribe if you do like that video. With that, let's have a look at the future of Flutter and if it's a good idea to learn it. Now, Flutter is a technology that allows you to build cross-platform applications for iOS and Android, native applications that are shipped uh, through the app stores of these platforms, with one language only. So instead of learning Objective-C and or Swift for iOS or Java for Android, you only use one language, Dart, which is relatively straightforward to learn, and Flutter, which is a framework for Dart, and a SDK to build that mobile application to kind of compile your code to mobile code. You use that and therefore you only have to learn one language to build two different apps, which is of course a great um, advantage. This is already uh, the biggest advantage Flutter gives you. It's the reason why you would use Flutter. And Flutter in particular, if we also compare it to like, for example, React Native. And by the way, I do have a complete comparison video that might be interesting if you want to get a more detailed comparison. But Flutter in particular has the advantage of being backed and being developed by Google, being very actively maintained by Google actually, where Google might even have bigger plans for Flutter in the future. Maybe at some point it should even uh, replace Android or become the primary development uh, stream for such apps. Though that's of course really a lot of guessing too. It's hard to tell if that's a thing. But it is actively maintained and therefore it's definitely not going anywhere. It's also relatively easy to learn, has a quite nice syntax in my opinion. If you know JavaScript and or Java, you'll have a relatively easy time getting started with Flutter and Dart. It gives you all of that. It gives you a powerful, actively maintained community, a lot of resources already, even though it's quite new. And that already is one of the disadvantages. It is quite new. That also means that a lot of patterns are still emerging. Uh, best practices are still to be defined. Uh, it also means that whilst there already are quite a lot of decent resources for learning it, like my complete Flutter course, which is a great resource if you want to learn it A to C, of course it's not the same amount of resources you find for technologies that have been around longer. Now Flutter actually has been in development for a couple of years, but it only got very uh, pushed and released in its final version uh, not even a year ago and therefore it is still something you can consider to be very new and actually there still are features that are missing or that will see a lot of work uh, in the upcoming months and, and years. So it is really new and that can be a disadvantage. As I said, it being backed by Google is probably not going anywhere or is certain to not go anywhere but you should be aware that with all the nice syntax and features you get there are also some missing pieces. Now one thing I want to highlight though is that the Flutter team is really also working on adding a lot of the core things you need in many apps like accessing the camera or using navigation or maps that these features are added to Flutter itself or as plugins to Flutter but maintained by the same Flutter team which ensures a certain quality, a certain maintenance level and that it always works with the latest version of Flutter. That's for example a difference to React Native where all these features are managed by the community and therefore you have maintenance problems way more often than you have it with Flutter. The downside still is that these plugins for Flutter are not all done yet. So some features are a bit more difficult or tricky to implement right now and you might need more workarounds. Perspectively though, I see that Flutter and Dart might give you a very nice build workflow because it's all coming from one and the same team. There are less frustrating moments. You can actually write native code and connect that to your Flutter Dart code in one and the same project. And that allows you to implement anything you want because you can always just go to the native code, write it and connect it. But the Flutter team actually, as I mentioned, works on a lot of separate plugins that make 
this step unnecessary. And that of course is great because then you as a developer can really stay in the Flutter and Dart world and use a lot of the features there without writing native code. Still of course it is great that you have all the flexibility. Now disadvantages of Flutter besides it being relatively new uh, could be that with all these cross-platform solutions, so also with React Native it's the same, you have these frustrating moments where you want to add a certain feature and it doesn't work like that. And you then need to write your own native code or find a community package that gives that feature to you. Then a version mismatch or missing maintenance might be a problem. So you will definitely have these frustrating moments. But the huge advantage of saving time because you don't have to learn two or three different languages really makes up for that or in reality makes more than that. Uh, you save more time, time than you waste on workarounds typically. But there might be some very advanced apps where building a native app might still be better than building an app with Flutter, but only practice gets you to the point where you can judge what to build with which technology. And in general, Flutter, as I explained, has all the building blocks to allow you to build very powerful apps with one technology only. I also want to highlight that historically Flutter had a huge focus on Android and the material design. Now that changed a bit and the Flutter team is heavily working on giving you more iOS styled widgets. Widgets are basically the building blocks they give you. And therefore you can build apps that look like Android apps if, you're, if they run on Android and that look like iOS apps if they're running on iOS. But it is worth mentioning that you as a developer have to write code to determine on which platform you are running to then render A or B. For example, Ionic, which is yet another solution that also has a slightly different approach. Um, Ionic does not compile apps to native code like Flutter does it, but does instead wrap a web app. But Ionic gives you components that automatically adjust their look and feel to the platform you're running on. Flutter doesn't have this at the moment. Um, it might be something that gets added in the future and there are certain patterns you can implement to easily swap components. But it is worth mentioning that right now such checks have to be done by you. And in my experience the iOS styled apps are still not quite on the same level as the material styled, styled uh, components. Though that is of course only a matter of time. Nonetheless, it is also a weakness or something you should be aware of that you might have to do these checks manually and that you don't get an app that automatically looks and feels perfect on all the platforms. On the other hand, this gives you more flexibility. And if you're building your own look that is neither material nor iOS, then this is very easy. And then of course you are probably more than fine with shipping only one look for both platforms. So it all has pros and cons. Now what about the future of Flutter? Flutter, as I mentioned, is relatively new. It's under highly active development. There are still missing features or bugs in there, definitely. If you check out the issue tracker, there is quite a good documentation on what will get added when though. And it's a very active community where you can also add issues and you really get feedback and um, the Flutter team picks that feedback up. So that is really good. And therefore we will see a lot of development over the next months and also over the next years. These official Flutter plugins, which I mentioned, uh, will become better and better and also reach some final form at some point. And then it will be very, very easy to build a lot of different kinds of apps with one technology only. And that could be a huge advantage over other alternatives like React Native, for example, where you rely on the community for such things. So I see that very positively. Um, the future of Flutter itself could be very bright if Google makes it its primary development tool for Android apps or for a brand new platform. But that is too hard to tell and certainly years away. So I wouldn't uh, learn Flutter just because of that. And there also are initiatives like Hummingbird where the Flutter team wants uh, to allow you to use Flutter, your Flutter app, to not just get an iOS and Android app, but to also get a web app out of that. So you really only have one code base then to get three different apps. And that's kind of the same promise as Ionic has, but with a different technology. As I mentioned, Ionic, another um, option, takes a web app and wraps that into a native app. And therefore you always have three different apps because you have the web app anyways. Flutter really takes code and compiles it to native code that runs on the native devices. 
and um, therefore you have well compiled code and to get a web app out of that, that code also needs to get compiled to HTML and JavaScript and so on. And that is something the Flutter team is also working on. And if that works, it's of course a pretty neat workflow because then, or a pretty neat thing with a pretty neat workflow, because then you really only have one project, one code base, and you can write for all major platforms, which sounds pretty great to me. So overall, there still is work to be done. Learning it now certainly is a good idea, but you should be aware that some features might be missing or might change a bit in the future. But I will actively track that progress with my course and I will keep my course updated. And I can only recommend diving into Flutter because it has a lot of great ideas and this integrated approach where one team gives you a lot of tools and you even might be able to build web apps with that. That all together with the strong backing by Google sounds pretty interesting to me. So definitely not the worst future for Flutter.